Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube, ta YouTube channel. <laughs> there we go, words. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. I have a little haul for you today where um, I've placed an order recently with Bean Paints. Now I've ordered from Bean Paints once before. They are a uh, handmade watercolour company um, run by an indigenous woman in Canada and she sources all of her pigments and um, uses local honey and it's just the whole process and their whole philosophy is amazing. I really love it. They're all about trying to be as zero waste as possible. They use, uh, I think it's zero plastic in all of their packaging and all of their products. And yeah, it's, it's an amazing company and I'm really happy to support them. Um, I have placed an order with them before. I ordered one of their um, Spectrum, um, they call these birch cookies, which is really cute. It's just like a literally a piece of wood from a tree. It's still got the bark on it and everything. And they've they drill little holes into it and pop the paint into each one. So you've got a little spectrum of all the colours, of like a range of their colours, including a silver and gold. And when I ordered this, they sent me what they call a paint stone. This is like the equivalent of their half pans. This is what I mean by them being like plastic free. They don't, they don't even use plastic half pans. They use these beeswax wrappers to um, store their, to put their paints into. And so they call these paint stones. And they sent me a paint stone of Payne's Grey as like a little thank you, like a sample to go with it, which is like a, which is really generous. Um, so anyway, it's been a while since I ordered these and um, like I said, I wanted to, wanted to support them a bit more and order some more paints from them because I really enjoyed them. But it, it can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're using larger brushes to get a lot of paint from these little, um, there's actually quite a lot of paint in there. I've had this for quite a while. I've used it for a few paintings. It does last a long time. But like I said, I can't really use a brush much bigger than a size six on these because otherwise I end up damaging the brush and stuff. So um, anyway, all that said, I placed an order for some more paint from them. And that's what I have here to unbox for you, unpackage for you today. Let me just move this paper out of the way. And uh, yeah, I've already opened it, but I haven't really looked inside yet. So as well as some paint, what I ordered was they had a mystery pack on their website um, where you could just get like a little mystery um, item that they would put in. It could be anything, it could be a paint, it could be tools, it could be um, all sorts of things. So yeah, it can be a lot of different things. Um, so this is firstly some of the paints that I ordered. And then I think this is also, yep. Some, so some of the paints I wanted to order, they sell them in like little sets of like fours or threes or like bigger sets as well. So when I was looking at the individual paints that I wanted to get, um, four of them came in a set, which was a just more economical way of getting them. So I picked some individually and I got the set as well. And then I think it's just like a little thank you note. And they also included a sample of one of their paints. I think this is like one called Peach or something. Um, I think it's the same as this color here, this like peachy color. So that's really nice of them. And the mystery item is this. It's another little cookie, birch cookie is what they call these. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Zorn palette. So it's a white, a black, a red, and a yellow, which is a color combination that um, the artist, I can't remember his first name, but uh, Zorn uh, used with most of his paintings. So um, that'll be interesting to play around with. Um, and the bag just has, it's like screen printed or stamped with their logo, which is really lovely. And so yeah, let's open up these paints. So this one's the Healthy Forest set of paint stones and they all come like wrapped in this beeswax canvas with their uh, logo and everything on it, which is beautiful. Okay, so these are the four paint stones in this set. How beautiful those are. It's like quite a lot of paint in one of these as well. So. It's a good sort of half pan quantity of paint. And I just love the packaging. It comes all wrapped in these beeswax wrappers. Okay, 
now I'm gonna have to try and figure out what everything was I'll just find my order actually let me open this one as well so these were the ones that I picked individually I think I ended up getting 11 colors in total and then I thought I have the Payne's gray already so then that'll be my 12th color in my set just love how there we go I clearly like greens because I now have like <laughs> four different greens these were very similar but they, they look different on the website and they're all incredibly incredibly cute little little nuggets of paint so I'm just gonna get this all set up and I'm gonna try and find my um, order so I can let you guys know all the color names and I'm just gonna lay them out here and then we'll do some swatching and show you what those look like all right so i've just rearranged things i've laid out the different paint stones on the palette um i'm going to swatch all of them including the little sample i'm not going to swatch these today but um maybe i'll do a little video with those later some of the colors are the same as i have here because i really like them um but what i'm going to do today i actually have a friend coming over in about half an hour so i only have enough time to just swatch these before that happens and then later I'll come back and I will either in a different video or at the end of this one, it depends how long this ends up being, I will do a sample painting using these paints as well just to show you how they work and how they work in an actual painting setting. Okay, so I'm actually going to take my little dropper and I typically do this with handmade paints anyway, is just putting a couple of drops of water on each paint um, just to give it a second to reactivate. Handmade paints are a little bit different than regular sort of commercial paints um, because they are handmade. They have a few more quirks to them, which is part of what makes them so enjoyable to me to use. And um, and yeah, so just giving them a couple of seconds to reactivate is not the worst thing in the world. And I've written the colour names so <laughs> I can actually tell you what everything is called, which is going to be nice. All right, so we're gonna start with the yellow and this is Fall Poplar Yellow. It's just a really lovely sunny yellow color. Oh, and the paper that I'm using is just De La Rowney Aquafine cold pressed paper. It's just a pretty standard sort of cellulose paper. They do have their pigment information on their website um, I just didn't write them down, <laughs> but they do actually publish their um, pigment info, which is great. Now this one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this one is bread. So I'm hoping I didn't get these in the wrong order. I think I got it right. Yeah, so this one's bread. Uh, it's just like a, sort of like a warmer, peachy sort of colour. really interested in this one I think it's just a warmer darker version of then we have red maple and this is a newer color on their website Ooh. this is just absolutely beautiful like a sort of purple leaning red that'd be beautiful for florals florals sorry words are a bit tricky today then we have Wild Cherry, which is just a beautiful sort of primary magenta colour. Splattering paint everywhere today, so that's great. Okay, then next up we have Great Ocean, which is what they're calling their um, ultramarine. It's a very standard ultramarine blue sort of colour but it's a great mixer as well. I don't tend to use ultramarine a huge amount on its own, but it's great for mixing purples and um, slightly more muted greens, and it's a granulating color, so it um, adds some nice texture. Then next up we have Prussian Blue, which as you all know is, by now is one of my favorite blues. Unfortunately, it is a fairly problematic color the pigment for Prussian, Prussian Blue, depending on the brand, can be fugitive. So um, I think, I don't know which video is going to come out first, but I have done some light fastness tests on my um, 
on a bunch of my um, uh, watercolors, not the handmade ones, but the commercial ones. Just dab up these little splatters. So that video should be coming out soon as we're gonna test those and check in every few months to see how those are holding up and which ones are fading. Next up we have milkweed, which I think if I'm not mistaken, this one is technically what they call a gouache. So it's basically just a more opaque watercolor. It's not a true like, like gouache the way you would think of as a, um, from like a commercial company, I think. It's more of just an opaque watercolor, but it's beautiful. And I love that sort of very yellowy green, lime green sort of color. It's a great, it's a great mixing color. And then we have spring green. Now this is one that came in the four set that I wasn't necessarily gonna buy on its own because I was getting the milkweed and I definitely wanted the milkweed, but it just worked out that I got both. And this one's definitely a bit more yellow. This one feels a bit, this one reminds me a lot of um, sort of Daniel Smith's green gold. Then next up we have pine. Another lovely rich, to me this is like a sap green sort of color. Maybe a little bit cooler than a traditional sap green, but it's beautiful. And I think mixed with the spring green will give more of a, like more of a sap green, sap green, if that makes sense. And next up we have boreal like a boreal forest. This is a lovely deep rich green. It's a bit more muted. And this reminds me a bit of um, like a perylene green, but it's not like that dark. It's, um, it's really granulating though, it's beautiful granulation there. Then next up we have Robin's egg, which again technically is part of what they call their gouache line. But um, like I said, I think their gouache is more of an opaque watercolor than a traditional gouache as such. But I mean, you can use it either way. You can use it thick, like more concentrated and creamy like a gouache, or you can water it down and use it more like a watercolor. It's like a lovely sort of tealy turquoisey color. Finally, this is the one I had from before is their Payne's Gray. And this one granulates as well, and it also separates a little bit. It's really beautiful. All right, well, that just got tainted by the splatter I forgot to clean up. All right, I'll do it underneath. It's a lovely sort of lighter gray color. And then we have the peach. Again, I think this one is technically one of their gouache colors. Definitely see it's more opaque, but washed out. It's a really lovely sort of skin tone base if you're mixing skin tones. So then moving on to the little Zorn palette. They don't have this on their website anymore, so I can't find out what the actual colors are, but I know it's a white, a yellow, a red, and a black. So I'll just put a little splotch of black there to see how opaque their white is. It's not too bad. And then the yellow, I think this might be the full popular yellow looks like it's the same, yeah. And then this is the red. And finally the black. Okay. That's what these look like all swatched out. And yeah, it's just some of you can see some of the swatches are still a bit red, but that red maple is beautiful. I'm not sure how well it's picking up on camera. I think this paper kind of mutes colors a little bit more than other papers do, but they are really beautiful, vibrant colors. They're gonna be a lot of fun to play around with. And I just love how these are packaged. I'll give you a little close up of what the paints look like. So yeah, I'm looking forward to painting with these a bit more. And I think I'll probably end up putting it in a separate video, but stay tuned. I will have a sort of like a paint with me video where I paint something with these 
watercolors and yeah so i think that's it for today thank you so much for joining me if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and um and yeah leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know what you think i should paint with this palette um what would you paint with this palette have you heard of bean paints before if i didn't mention it already i will have links to their website their instagram everything down below they are really active on instagram they post a lot about their processes behind the scenes paint samples all that sort of stuff our shop updates they do a lot on instagram and they have a lot of information on their website as well about their processes and all of that good stuff so be sure to definitely check them out i'm also going to leave another review of bean paints which is how i first heard about them by and it was a review done i think like a year or so ago by denise soden of in liquid color and i will leave her review linked below as well because she does a really lovely thorough review of them and um and yeah so i highly recommend I mean, I recommend her channel anyway. I've learned so much from Denise over the last year since I started watercolors. So I'd recommend her channel anyway, but that review in particular was kind of my introduction to these paints. And yeah, so I thought I'd let you know about that. And, and yeah, I'll leave that. I'll leave it at that for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys again soon. All right, bye.